Welcome to my first video of my grid tie power inverter. Uh, I guess I'm going to call it power shifting. I should probably trademark that term for someone. Some big company is probably going to try and start using it once they watch my video. So uh, anybody that has this as of October 18th, 2012, I am now claiming rights to the term power shifting. Uh, basically, what I wait, what I got here is a 300 watt <coughs> excuse me grid tie power inverter. Uh, this is used a, as a very simple method of connecting solar panels and back feeding the power directly into your home grid system. Now it does have the uh, safety cutoff, so if your grid power does go down, it will stop feeding the power into the grid automatically. To uh, <coughs> excuse me, I need to take a cough and fill um, to keep uh, a lineman from getting zapped while he's working on what he thinks is a dead or powerless line. Which, um, if he does follow the rules, he'll have tested for that before even starting his work. Um, so, anyways. Previously, I had 45 watts worth of Harbor Freight solar panels connected up to this inverter. And for over a year, I had this in a Tupperware outside my home, um, pumping about 45, 40, 45 watts of juice back into my grid. Um, not much over the course of a day. Came out to about, I measured over the course of a month, of during the summer month, I came about to about $1.50 in electrical savings a a month, the winter time about ninety five cents, enough to ever uh, pay for this equipment, not by a long shot. Now, with knowing me, uh, I like to tinker, so I f thought, what happens if we could take a car battery or, when actually, we're going to want to use a deep cycle battery. I just have my lawnmower battery here as a tester, just to play with. Now, I have what's called time of use electrical service. What that does is, uh, during the daytime when electrical demands on the grid are high, I pay more for my electricity. Right now, that would be about 25 cents a kilowatt hour. Yes, that is a lot compared to the normal 13 cents a kilowatt hour um, standard flat rate. But the, here's the big part, the good part. From 7 p.m. to 7 a.m., or in other words, when my family is home and most actively using our electricity, I only pay about four and a half to five cents a kilowatt hour. So also I charge my electric cars at night, uh, which suffice to say, draw quite a bit of juice. Um, so uh, I thought, what happens if I could charge up a battery during the nighttime when my power usage is cheap and pump that back into the grid during the daytime when my power usage is high? I do know using at least this small inverter, I would never be able to do en enough power to completely wipe out my daytime usage, but enough to take the edge off of things would be great. Or in other words, if I could supplement 25 cents a kilowatt hour for every kilowatt that I pump back in during the daytime, that's 25 cents saved. So you could see how that can add up fairly quickly. So, going through documentation, these devices, and not a single one that I could find, whether just a cheap little $99 direct plug one that requires no hard wiring, plug it into any 110 outlet, nor the uh, very expensive uh, home grid tie systems could limit current. Um, so, say you plugged it in directly into a car battery, or deep cycle battery, some battery, it would just keep going until you got the inverter is so hot it either blew the fuse or blew a capacitor or some other electronical component inside the inverter. So in other words, you're going to keep going until you toast your inverter. Not good. So, I was doing some searching on how to make a circuit <coughs> and uh, that would limit DC power. And I couldn't find too much, at least nothing that would be within my skill level or would make things cost effective without first converting the DC to AC, or in other words, using a standard 12-volt uh, to 120-volt inverter, and then using some sort of charger 
to reconvert it back down to DC again to pump into here. So without doing that, that would be rather expensive and uh, the losses the, uh, due to the inefficiency and heat generated in doing that would make, uh, make this pretty much uh, a break even or even lose some money in this process. So that went out the window. Then I was searching around on one of my favorite deal websites called DX.com or Deal Extreme. They got a lot of neat gadgets, ships directly from China, extremely cheap. And I found this little this little bugger here. <coughs> I started off with a, a smaller one. This one's only rated at they claim it can go up to 150 watts pass through wattage worth of uh, DC electricity. However, uh, the most I've been able to get through it's about 75. I think that has to do with some heat buildup. I am working on a way to mitigate that. Let me get a little bit more of a close-up for you. Got uh, two capacitors. Um, we got a potentiometer here. Uh, incoming connections. We got some erective. Uh, one of those is a. Uh, I'm losing it here. A voltage regulator. I am. I could not read uh, the part number on the other one. So I do not know what the other one is. Um, but basically what that device does is this allows you to put in any voltage from the input side from 12 to uh, about 36 volts and have coming out an adjustable, hence the uh, potentiometer, an adjustable any voltage coming out from 12 to about 36 volts. So I said, oh, let me give that a try. So, uh, here's what I got. Now, for the most part here, I got, I got all the wires connected up. Um, we'll, I'll show you the actual operation since I forgot all my meters at home to show exactly what's going on. What we're going to do... Oh, heck. Let's see, do I have an extension cord I can plug in? Actually, I do. Alright, let's give this a try here. Now, with this specific... Uh, Inverter, first thing you want to do, and I did test this without a load on already, and um, I actually found the higher I set it, the higher the voltage I set this at for outcoming, outgoing side. Mind you, this will take anything from 12 to 24 volts, give or take, a, like 5%. Um, when I set this higher, it ran more efficiently, or in other words, was able to keep up with the voltage demand and the wattage demand without overheating as much. So, first thing you do, you clamp on, clamp on to the battery first. Do not plug the inverter in first, or you can have some rather crispy outcomes on a few of my tests. Thank God they put small fuses in there. Not easy to replace, as this is an older unit. But at least they have them. Thank you to the Chi thanks to the Chinese. So you can see the little green light on. Uh, so the power is currently running through there, and red light is on on the inverter. Um, it's going to have to be off camera due to its location, but I am going to plug in the inverter to the uh, 110 outlet. There we have it. Slight buzz coming from the inverter. But as you can see here, the green lights are shifting. The faster those shift, the more power it's putting into the grid. <coughs> like I said, I tested this up to about 75 watts. They have another one rated at 300. Uh, that one was about eight times the price. This was only about $9, so I felt more comfortable almost blowing up one of those rather than maybe blowing something up that's $40, 50 bucks. Uh, plus, I have to wait three months for Deal Extreme to get it to me from Hong Kong, which uh, I just order things and get to them when I get to them. So right now, that's working. I can feel there's a slight buzz in the inverter. That light's moving right now quite a bit quicker than when it did when I had my 45 watts of solar panels on. And... It's getting slightly warm. What I was thinking of doing for cooling of that was uh, either place a small 12 volt PC fan over here and hook it up to the input side. Ooh, 
That's never happened before. The light, little green lights, uh, little green lights flickering a bit. If I didn't do that, um, I thought maybe I'd put uh, put this inside a glass jar with a plastic lid, fill the, the jar with a mineral, a mineral oil of some sort. And I know why that's happening. It's because this battery is too low. So there you have that. I'm gonna unplug that right now before I cause any damage. Like this, that if I I can put that in a jar of mineral oil to help quickly dissipate the heat, and um, that should be enough heat dissipation from that where it will not affect um, the device at all, and I might even be able to pump out higher wattage uh, if I have uh, better heat dissipation. I'm sure having it uh, screwed onto a wood board doesn't help either. So there you have it. That's that's uh, my plan for uh, power shifting. Charge at night. Use it during the day. Um, inefficiencies. This is supposed to be rated at about 90% efficiency. Um, I have measured that, and I can vouch that uh, the efficiency actually came in at about 89, which is very good. Uh, this is also rated at about 90% efficiency. Um, so I think overall, um, it would it would be as if I was paying um, cost-wise about 10 cents per kilowatt hour which compared to my normal daytime usage uh, which is uh, 25 cents a kilowatt hour I can save quite a bit of money once I have it set up correctly um, and automated and uh, before I close this video uh, my automated plans were have this on a timer to kick in to the grid at 7 a.m. When, when grid usage is expensive and a battery charger on the battery to kick in at 7 p.m. to auto automatically start charging the battery um, which I use autom automatic battery chargers that shut off when the battery is full um, and have that start <coughs> charging the battery at approximately 7 p.m. maybe a little later than that uh, when electric usage is cheaper um, as always with my videos, if you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comment section of this video or feel free to message me through eBay or give us a call. I think our contact information is listed right under this video. Uh, right about there, hit the little tab and it will pop down uh, right below the video. So, have a great evening. Wait part two when I have my meters. Um, I have a kilowatt meter and my multimeter show you how much amperage and wattage I am pumping through into the grid. That will be the next video. And then I'm going to see about uh, putting two batteries back to back to input 24 volts approximately into this thing instead of just going from a 12 volt battery. See if that's how much more efficient uh, that makes it. And I might have to figure out a way to cool that down for those tests as well. So have a good night and uh, I think I'm going to shut up now. Bye bye.